Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Sculptfun S30 Pro Max Diode Laser Engraving and Cutting Machine. I will be showing the 20 watt version that also comes with an automatic software controlled air assist. So what do I think of this machine? Is there anything I like or think could be improved? Well, let's find out. Like I said before, this is the S30 Pro Max from Sculptfun, and I will be reviewing the 20 watt version. Now, this machine also comes with a 10 watt and 5 watt version with an identical setup minus the wattage and the size of the workable area due to the size of the laser module itself. Since this laser is the larger 20 watt version, you can get a workable area of about 370 by 360 millimeters. Now, this machine can also be expanded up to 935 by 905 millimeters. But again, that, I would assume that you could get that with the 5 and 10 watt laser, but the 20 watt would be slightly less than that. You can also get a kit that will only expand the Y axis to 935 millimeters. Again, as you can see in this picture, it says 410 by 400 millimeters but that would really be achievable with the lower 5 or 10 watt lasers. Okay, so now back to my specific machine. It came very well packed with everything nicely labeled in bags that correspond to the steps in the assembly uh, that the hardware is used for. I was really impressed with the directions until I got to the part about hooking up the limit switches. It basically says to watch the online videos uh, at the time I was assembling, the video showed a slightly different setup to mine, so I was a little confused, but in the end it wasn't too hard to set up. The machine comes with an all-metal frame of 2020 aluminum extrusion. The frame comes with a ruler printed on it, but this is really only good for measuring the part that you are about to engrave on, as it doesn't correspond to the grid measurements or anything like that. Just a good tool for measuring your piece. The machine is also equipped with those limit switches that I was talking about a moment ago, which will allow the machine to home and to be able to use absolute coordinates. I created a grid and burned it on the spoil board to take advantage of that function. As you can see, I made the grid 360 by 360 millimeters just to make it square and easier to use. The laser module runs on a nice linear rail that provides smooth movement across the x-axis. My laser is the 20 watt version that is essentially four 5 watt lasers that are all focused in the same spot. The picture on Amazon shows the lasers as 6 watts each, but that would make the laser 24 watts, but I think that might be a slight exaggeration. The laser spot size is reported by the company at 0.08 by 0.1 millimeters. At the bottom of this laser is the laser shield covering the nozzle for the air assist. Under that, of course, is the laser itself, and one cool thing that this machine comes with is a toolbox with another lens so that you can replace the lens once it wears out to keep you working if that happens. You should also periodically remove the air assist and clean the lens by swabbing it with alcohol. This ensures your lens is clean and also your laser performs at its best and also prolongs the life of your lens itself. So to use the laser, you simply need to place the object that you are working on under the laser and using the included aluminum spacer, you lower the laser until the frame rests on that spacer. Then that gives you the proper focal height of your machine. So this brings me to my first slight gripe about this machine. The tension screws to adjust the Z height of the laser are on the back of the module and not super easy to get to. I pretty much have to do it without looking at it, which isn't impossible, but it's just not the easiest way I've done it on my other machines. Also, there are four of the screws, which might be because of the weight of the 20 watt module, but the next issue is, is that to be able to reach the spoil board or any other flat object, you can only use two of them. Now, this seems to work fine, but it would have been nicer if there was a way to use all four or have the locking mechanism on the side. The second small gripe I had was that the instructions uh, have you attach the laser wire and the air assist tube to the back top mounting plate, 
Um, but in doing so, you limit the height that you would be able to raise the laser head. It would have been nice if there was another connection point uh, for that hose and that wire. The last feature that I want to talk about before getting into the performance of this machine is that air assist. So this machine comes with an automatic air assist that can be controlled by the software itself. This machine is open source, so it can use many different software packages, including Lightburn and Laser Gerbil. If you are using Lightburn, you can turn on the air assist per layer, which will allow you to turn it on for cutting and off for engraving. This is a really neat feature, and I like the fact that this can all be done at the same time without having to turn on the air assist and then turn it off manually. However, there is one thing that I wish I saw here. On some of my other machines that I am using the 20 watt laser, I like to have the air assist on, but a very low volume even while engraving. Not enough to work as a true air assist like you get while cutting, but I like to keep that positive pressure in the nozzle to keep the smoke from going back up in the nozzle, potentially making the lens dirty. You can see that as soon as I unplug the tube while burning, you can see smoke coming out of the tube, which means it's in the nozzle. Uh, it would just be awesome if there was a way to adjust the air pressure uh, and not just turn it on and off. There is also no way to start or stop the air assist manually if you forget to change that setting in the software. Everything is controlled through the software. All right, now on to how it performs. Like I said before, the first thing that I burned was my spoil board grid so that I could use those absolute coordinates. I then wanted to do a power speed test on the provided test wood to see what the settings would be for that wood. So according to the website, the machine can engrave up to 6,000 millimeters per minute. That was also what was set in the machine Gerbil settings, but to be honest, I felt that the speed was a little slow for the power of this laser. I reached out to SculptFun in the chat on their website and asked what the max speed was, and they said around 10,000 millimeters per minute. I still feel like this was too slow since some of my other lasers with 32-bit motherboards could engrave up to 24,000 millimeters per minute. Now, I can't recommend that you change your settings from what the manufacturer has suggested, but I wanted to see how this laser could perform at those higher speeds. I changed my Gerbil setting in Lightburn and wrote those to the machine. I then ran a power speed test all the way up to 24,000 millimeters per minute and it seemed to function just as I would have expected. It looked fine, so I wanted to run an image and at first tried the image at 18,000 millimeters per minute and it came out a little light, so I ran it again at 11,000 millimeters per minute and it turned out fine. Again, that's almost two times the recommended speed, but it worked. Lastly, I ran the file at the advertised 6,000 millimeters per minute and it turned out darker, but nice as well. There was a lot of detail in this image, but it was really just a drawing, so I wanted to repeat the test with a photo. I ran everything again at the 18,000, 11,000, and 6,000 millimeters per minute, and again got similar results. The detail was nice, and those images came out great, even at those faster than advertised speeds. With the engraving down, I wanted to test out the cutting on this machine. I ran a cut speed test on the included 3mm wood, and again the laser performed as expected. All of this was also with the air assist on. Now, you only want to use the air assist while cutting, and not when you engrave. Like I said before, I wish I could use a trickle of the air assist, but you definitely don't want it on full blast while engraving. I made two of these projects where on the one on the top, I intentionally left the air assist on while engraving, to show you the difference. On the bottom, the only time the air assist was on was while cutting. You can see you can get a much better and clearer picture while engraving without the air assist. Okay, so most lasers can cut three millimeters of wood, but this is a 20 watt laser, so I wanted to cut thicker wood. The first thing I did was this 10 millimeter piece of wood. I tried 300 millimeters a minute at 100%, but it didn't cut all the way through in just one pass. I then slowed the speed down to 100 millimeters per minute at 100%, and that easily cut through the wood in one pass. However, I don't like running at that speed and would rather do more passes at a faster speed, so I did it again at 400 millimeters per minute 
but three passes. It's actually faster, but also gives you a nicer finish as the laser isn't just sitting there burning the wood at the same spot for too long, and it worked great. I also wanted to point out something here. This is a solid piece of wood and not plywood. Plywood is built up of multiple layers of wood, glue, and fillers, so it's harder to cut through than something like this solid, I, I think, basswood. Just to keep that in mind, that you might need more passes to cut through plywood than you would through this solid stuff. Next, I had some scrap wood from a tree trunk. This wood is just over 19 millimeters thick, which is about three quarters of an inch, and it cut through at 400 millimeters per minute with 12 passes. I know that sounds like a lot, but again, I could have done it slower, but I would rather not char the sides of the wood too much. Circles are one thing, but then I decided to do a letter, and it turned out great once again. I tried to do another letter, but this time I reduced the passes to 10 passes at 400 millimeters per minute, but it didn't work. You can see that just like with plywood, there can be inconsistencies in the wood that cut at different rates. You will especially notice this in plywood when cutting over what looks like where branches were. In this example, you can see that the laser needed those extra passes to get through the rings of the tree as those are more dense than the other areas. The last thing I wanted to show was how this machine can engrave colors on stainless steel and other metals. I first ran one of the same power speed tests that I ran on the wood just to see what colors I got at what speed and power. I didn't do anything to treat the metal, and it came out with some colors. If I do this again, I might try smaller increments of speed and power to see if I can get more of a color range. Another thing I want to point out here is that you have to be careful with the metal that you are using and make sure it's not too reflective as you don't want to reflect the laser and damage either the laser or more importantly your eyes themselves. I'm actually using the back of the sheet I bought since the other side is basically a mirror. The other thing is that this process can warp the metal if it's too thin so it would have been best if it had been somehow tied down to the spoil board. I then took those settings that I got from the test and tried it on this image, and it turned out pretty good. Now, the issue that ended up happening here was that as the image was burning, the heat started to really warp the metal, which caused the height to change, and in doing so, ended up changing the colors on the final image. I didn't intend to give him blue sidebirds, but overall, it was a pretty good test. So that's really the test that I performed so far on this machine, and I won't go over every material that this can do, since at the end of the day, this is another diode laser and performs pretty well. It can do treated ceramic tiles, slate, glass treated with tempura paint or some other coating, leather, PCB boards, uh, cardboard, plastic, and things like colored acrylics. It cannot cut clear acrylics, as the visible blue light wavelength of this laser would simply pass through that material. So now for my overall thoughts on this machine. The machine seems well built, and while it's made out of the 2020 aluminum extrusion, other than some of the other brands that use just metal frames, it seems to be sturdy enough and works fine. I was able to get the machine up and running fairly quickly, and since the machine is open source, I can pretty much pick any software package that I want to control it. I really like that automatic air assist function, as I would rather do all of the project at the same time, rather than doing an engraving pass followed by a separate cut pass, uh, where I have to manually turn the air assist on and off. Also, while I don't have one, it seems like you can attach a rotary to this machine for things like tumblers and other cylindrical objects. There is also an enclosure sold by Sculptfun that you can use to help with the smoke if you're using this machine indoors. I use an enclosure from another brand and it seemed to fit just fine. I really wish that more attention was put into the wire management as I could see it becoming a problem where the wire loom could either interfere with the Y-axis rollers or even worse with the laser itself if it bends in the wrong direction. I, I would really have liked to see some sort of drag chain or other solution there. As far as I can tell, other than the shield on the laser, there really are not any other safety features on this laser. Uh, yes, you should always be wearing the included safety glasses that come with the machine, 
and never leave this or any laser alone at any time. But this machine also has no flame detectors, bump sensors, or emergency stop buttons other than the power button on the top. It's just always good to be aware and vigilant when using uh, this or any laser. The machine also says that there is a future where this machine is upgradable to a wireless and offline usage, but I couldn't find any information on that kit or when it will become available. Overall, I think it's a pretty nice machine. It might not have every bell and whistle of some of the other brands, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the end product, and I've been pretty happy with how this machine has performed. I wanted to thank SculptFun for sending this machine to me for my honest opinion and allowing me to test it out for you guys. So that's it. If you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding machines, CNC, and all things Maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.